people. Whether they were in for the full three and a half or not, I don't know. But that was the amount of, that was when the this, this session started and they came in when they came in and <laughs> not together. Um, and it took three and a half hours to actually do that first session. Uh, so as I understand it for that first session, Mr. Depp and Amber Heard did not come in together? I don't believe that they did. The next session with Amber, with Ms. Heard alone for background intake, and that was a two and one third hour session. And that session was on October 6, 2015? Yes. And what's the next uh, row? Indicated? The next day. You saw Amber on October 6, 2015 for two and a third hours, correct? Yes. Okay. And what is the next uh, row indicating? The next day, October 7th, Mr. Depp for three and a half. Again, it may not have been face to face for the full three and a half, but it was being at the beginning of the session, waiting for him, his coming in with the entourage and our getting to work. And for the, th the three sessions we just discussed, the, the October 1st session, the October 6th session, and the October 7th session, those were all in person with you, correct? So yes, the first three sessions were all in person. And then what does it say under, for the next row, for the 1014 row? Couple, three hours. So on October 14th, 2015, Amber Heard and Mr. Depp saw you for a couple session? Yes. There's a, there's a couple session on October 14th for three hours, is that right? 1014, there's a couple session. On 1021, there's a couple session where someone walked out for two hours. On 1024, Ms. Heard was there, we did a phone session for one and a half. And, and how did, and on the 1024 row, next to the two hours, it says W out, correct? It's 1021. In the, in the 1021 row, what does it say in the fourth column? Walk, for me, that's walk out. And do you recall who walked out of that meeting? I have tried to, and I don't, because each threatened and stood up, <laughs> and I'm not positive who finally did the walk out. And then what does it say, what is it indicating on the row for 11-12? 2015. Couple session showed one and a half hours. And then on 1217, what does that show? Amber alone showed two and a quarter hours. Based on this ledger, you saw Amber and Mr. Depp for four couple sessions? That's right. Dr. Anderson, I'm showing you it's been Marcus Anderson three. And your, your honor, at this time, uh, we're looking to move uh, defense exhibit 397. I understand there's no objections. So All right. 397, no objection, is that correct? Do you have uh, hearsay and relevance objections? They, they didn't list objections in their exhibit list, and then we actually communicated this morning, and they said they weren't objecting. All right, do you know who on the team you, you, you talked with? I'm sorry. No, that's a, just who, who, who? I believe it was Jessica Myers. Okay. Objection. All right. So no objection. All right. And that's okay. 397 in evidence then. Defense 397. Um, and I will let you, which is CC000172, I'll let you take a look at it. So it's a one page email. So let me know when you're finished. Do you recognize this email chain? Yes. Do you know who Christian Carino is? Yes. Yeah. On the page where it says laurel.anderson28 at gmail.com, that's your email address? Yes. The email of March 28th, 2015 from Mr. Carino, he wrote, 
uh, Laurel, my closest friend, Amber, on copy, wants to come see you alone first and then with her husband, Johnny. We'll leave it to you two to arrange a time. Love you both. You see that email? Did you receive that email from March 18th, 2015? I did. And you responded to Mr. Carino's email, correct? As you can see, yes. Yeah. What was your understanding as to why Amber Heard wanted to meet with you? Mm -hmm. I took it at face value that Ms. Heard wanted to have a consultation. And if this is not infrequent that I might get an email like this. So, and when I hear that someone may then later want to come in with their husband or spouse, yes, I think it has to do with relationship issue. Um, on September 9th, 2015, you received an email from Mr. Carino, is that right? Yes, apparently. He was trying to set it up. And Mr. Carino was trying to set up a meeting uh, with you and Amber and Mr. Depp, is that right? Yes, that's what I assumed. And, and you responded to Mr. Carino's email, um, correct? I did. And then at the top, you received an email from Amber Heard? Yes. And, and she wrote, hi, Laurel, thank you so much for responding. I really appreciate it. I have to speak to my husband when he's done working today and make sure he's good with that time. I think it sounds perfect. Thank you so much again. I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to meeting you. Did I read that correctly? Yes. And, and you received that email from Amber Heard? I did. Um, on September 27th, 2015, you received an email from Amber Heard, correct? Yes. And Amber wrote, hi, Laurel, Johnny and I are back in town and would love to know if you have any availability to see us this week. Please let me know, thanks. You received that email from Amber Heard? Yes. And you responded that you were available on Thursday at 5.30 p.m., correct? Yes. And, and um, looking at the top of the email where it says Wednesday, September 30th, um, would you agree that the next day is uh, Thursday, October 1st, 2015? Yes. Okay. And we need to, we can go back to your billing ledger, but the first time you saw Amber Heard and Mr. Depp was on October 1st, 2015, is that right? Yes. But did you see Amber Heard on December 17th, 2015? Yes, we, we had established that, yes. I saw the seven on screen. Dr. Anderson, I'm showing you it's been marked as Anderson Exhibit 7, which is depth 3202. Uh, take a chance to read it and let me know when you're finished. Attachment seven is a, at the bottom is a, you see a March 8th, 2016 email from Christian Carino to you, correct? Yes. And Christian Carino was asking if you'd be willing to make a house call to Johnny Depp's apartment downtown, is that right? I did not know where he lived. But his email says, would you be willing to make a house call to Johnny's apartment downtown, correct? Did it say downtown? Yes, it did, okay. And then you responded on March 8th, 2016, correct? Yes. And you wrote, hey, Christian, have of course avoided this my whole career unless someone was in rehab, would be willing to try it once and that there's something I'd like Johnny to understand and I don't think he does. Um, where you wrote, I'd like Johnny to understand um, that, I'd, where you wrote, would, would would be willing to try it once in that there's something I'd like Johnny to understand that I don't think he does. What did you mean by that? 
I can't say exactly what it was I wanted to impart, but I, I know that I thought that he was <laughs> um, having difficulty in the sessions. And I think there was something about the process between the two of them that I was trying to clue him into. What difficulty was Mr. Depp having in the sessions? <clears throat> having a voice. So we're hearing from their therapist, Dr. Laurel Anderson, who is testifying right now in the way of a videotaped deposition that's being played for this jury, uh, with someone that treated them both as a couple. She counseled them as a couple together. We're going to hear more of what she has to say when Court TV Live continues after this break. Go to prettylitter.com. Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Julie Grant. Let's go back into the courtroom together now in Fairfax County, Virginia, where we're seeing the dueling defamation case of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Their therapist is on the stand right now. She counseled them together as a couple. Let's watch. If you could just please, in summary fashion, just describe your employment history from 1982 forward after earning your PhD. Um, I collected clinical hours um, in hospitals and in psychiatric medical groups. I was employed to do some nutrition evaluation and intervention as well, but there were MDs behind me. We worked in concert, um, then worked in a hospital with, I think, I think that doctor was, re, uh, was, um, workers comp um and then when i was you know i have it out of order then i was on my own but i was employed by that this is when i was employed by a psychiatric medical group um to do kind of a combination of psychotherapy and some nutrition and then since then i have been so, a solo practitioner out of network word of mouth only very small footprint <laughs> um purposely um all of these years when did you become a solo practitioner? Um, very soon, probably uh, in probably in eighty six. So, is it fair to say that as of two thousand fifteen, you were you were already quite established as a solo practitioner? Yes. Generally speaking, what type of services did you provide your patients in two thousand fifteen? Adults only, individual or couples work, and um, with a limited number of people, there would have been neurotransmitter testing and uh, some attention to lifestyle and how <laughs> uh, nutritional elements affect the brain. And if you would just please describe for us lay people what a clinical psychologist does. Um, the first thing is evaluation, intake, gather material. The second thing in the way I work is kind of, uh, during the intake process could be one session, could be four sessions, depends on if it's an individual or a couple. I'm conceptualizing. I'm looking for the process. The content is something I make notes on, I care about. It leads me from session to session, but I'm really looking at process. What's going on between two people or what's actually going on inside of someone. The third step is I am I show my hand. I talk about it. I try to get either three people in the room all on the same page with me or one other person. This is what I see. And then the onus is on me to not just be a good friend and hold someone's hand and talk about mom, <laughs> but to actually make change. And so I lay out, here are the things I think we need to work on. Um, and then there are action steps for all of them so that someone has a more directed sense of what they're doing in psychotherapy as opposed to just coming in and talking about how they feel. Is it your practice when you have a session with a couple that you take notes from the session? I absolutely take notes from any session. Do you take, at what time in relation to this session do you take the notes? 
um, I'm taking them during the session and they know it because so I don't want hours and hours and hours of homework at the end of a clinical day. So the notes are often, uh, you know, a lot of typos, wrong pronouns here and there, but essentially I'm just trying to gather facts as I go. Is it fair to say that you take the notes in a somewhat contemporaneous fashion? <laughs> sure. And do you take those notes in the ordinary course of your practice and your business? Absolutely. Do you maintain or do you keep those notes as part of your uh, treatment and regular course, ordinary course of business? I do. Thank you. And what type of information generally do you keep in your notes other than what you've already testified about? Whatever I want to. A anything that come. It, it could be content that I'm tracking just so I know in the next session what kind of content we were talking about. Um, and it could be processed too. Stand by. Now I'll mark that as ex uh, plans exhibit number one. Showing exhibit one on the screen. You, just to confirm, have you seen this do uh, document before, Dr. Anderson? Yes. And and what is it? It's uh, Christian Carino doing the first contact, and the second one is from Ms. Hurd. Uh, wanting to know how to get in touch with me. But accepting uh, what's been thrust upon us, when was your first uh, couples therapy involving Ms. Hurd? October 1st, 2015. Was that an in-person session? Yes. Where was the session held? In my office. And, and Mr. Depp was also there, correct? Yes. How long was that first session? Three and a half hours. Was that the first time that you had ever met Ms. Hurd in person? I think so. And was that the first time you had ever met Mr. Depp in person? Yes. Okay, now if, if you could please turn, and this is a multi-page exhibit uh, Mr. Nadelhaft did not show you. Uh, this is going to be plaintiff's exhibit two. Stand by. Can I interrupt a second, Ben? Sure. Um, Adam, can you turn up your microphone? Because everyone's a lot louder than you, and when you object, I struggle to hear you. Can you hear me? Well, <laughs> know, Michelle is a lot louder than you, so if you talk at the same time, I can't okay. hear you. All right, I'll see what I can. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Thank you. And Dr. Anderson, if you could just take as long as you. Uh, would like to familiarize yourself with this document. I'll just state for the record, these are documents that you produced uh, that have a Bates designation one through 17. Yes, that, I'm familiar. Um, what are these? Oh, well, strike that. Have you ever seen plaintiff's exhibit two before? Yes. What What is it? It's a redacted copy of my personal notes that I provided to you guys. And are these, um, I think you testified in response to Mr. Nadelhaft's questioning that the names Ann Henry and Joey Davis are pseudonyms? Yes. And uh, would you please just identify for us who Ann Henry is in real life? Ann Henry is Amber Heard, Joey Davis is Johnny Depp. And are these uh, your notes that you took contemporaneously of the four couples th uh, of, strike that, are these your contemporaneous notes that you took of the couples therapy sessions? Yes. Would these notes include any session that you had for Ms. Heard that was not part of the couples therapy? No. Did you have any sessions with Mr. Depp individually that weren't part of the couples therapy? No, during this period of time, it's color coded. Black is couples, red is Ms. Hurd, and blue is Mr. Depp. Uh, whether I talked to them or saw them individually or 
as a couple, it was all in service of couples therapy. Understood. And so these notes in plaintiff's exhibit to encompass all of the couples therapies sessions that you had with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd, either when they appeared together or when they appeared separately in the context of your couples therapy. Is that correct? I'm looking at one page. If you're talking about the entire redacted document, yes. And I've asked you the question generally, but I want to ask you in the context of, of these 17 pages. Did you prepare these 17 pages of couples therapy notes in the ordinary course of your treatment of Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? Yes. Did you maintain or keep them in the ordinary course of your practice or business? I did. So my question was, uh, what is the significance of October 1, 2015? Um, I'm going to look at what I'm reading so that this makes sense to you. This can't possibly make sense, but it makes sense to me. Okay. They reported what they said to one another. So the first line is Ms. Heard talking, saying that Mr. Depp says to her, no one likes you, you're getting fame from me, I'm falling out of love with you, you're a whore. She's reporting just in the first session just how bad the relationship is, just how mean they are to one another. And at that point, I, because I'm typing quickly as they go along, I'm switching into a different voice, more about the process. Okay, as we head to break at the bottom of this hour, I wanna make an important point. Uh, during the last commercial break, there was something that we didn't get to see going over the air that we said in the courtroom. And we have our team, of course, present there taking copious notes. This couple's therapist said in this video deposition that Johnny Depp and Amber Heard engaged in mutual abuse, that Amber Heard reported to her in therapy that Johnny Depp was violent with her, and that she also admitted in therapy to striking him as a way to keep him from leaving her, that she would strike him in an attempt to fight with him to get him to stay. So again, that was said, and we're working to cut that clip for you so you can see it for yourself. But just wanted to make that important note because that, of course, is my job here to make sure you get all the important stuff here on Court TV Live. We'll be right back after this quick break. In app and online. Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Julie Grant. The rocky relationship between two Hollywood stars is now on full display for a Virginia jury as the dueling defamation cases of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard are underway. We're in day number three of testimony. We're on witness number five. Uh, the jury is hearing about how this romance between these two lovers and ex-spouses turned really sour and then allegations of abuse started coming out. Now, before the start of this trial, Amber Heard posted on social media saying, quote, I've always maintained a love for Johnny and it brings me great pain to have to live out the details of our past life together in front of the world, end quote. Now, let's take you back into the courtroom. We're hearing deposition testimony. So this was videotaped uh, some months ago. Uh, as part of this case. So this isn't a witness on the stand today testifying remotely. You can see the date there on her computer, February of this year. Her name is Dr. Laurel Anderson. She counseled Johnny Depp and Amber Heard as a couple and says that they were mutually abusive. When she, when she admitted that she socks Mr. Depp? Yes, because <laughs> there were three lines above this that explained the progression a bit. And I've already said what it was. Um, she felt she had to hit him back if he hit her, um, and so she always did. And and again, that entry is from a session where Mr. Depp was not physically present, correct? That's right. Okay, let's move to the next session, uh, October 7, 2015. And this is a three and a half hour session, is that correct? Yes. Was that an in-person session? Yes. Did both Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd attend? 
No, this is blue. This is John, Mr. Depp's intake. Under, understood. And let's move now um, to the toward the bottom of the page. And I think I'm finally getting the code right. Um, so the next session occurred on October 14th, 2015, and it was the two of them for three hours. Is that correct? Yes. And that was another in-person session, true? Yes. Um, and am, am I right to say that every single piece of your notes as to the October 14th, 2015 session has been redacted? Is that true? Yes, but I, to clarify something earlier on the ledger. Yes. I wrote two hours couple then Amber. It means he is the one who walked out of that session. My question was, um, am I correct that all of your notes for the October 14th, 2015 couple session for three hours are completely redacted. Is that true? Yes. So, um, so the next session occurred on October 21, 2015, true? True. And it lasted two hours. It started as a couple, then Mr. Depp left, and then you spoke only with Amber, but in the context of couples therapy, is that right? Yes. Okay, and let's go to the next session on uh, page 10. The next session was on October 24th, 2015. And I can't see from the code, was that a, a, a couple's therapy or was it just one or the other of them attending? I don't know. This is a red phone session with Ms. Hurd. Okay, great. Um, and it lasted one and a half hours? Yes. So the next session was after that was on October 29th, 2015, is that right? Yes. And um, that just... That, that one? No, that one was uh, canceled. Oh, it was canceled. That's why it's so short. Okay. And then the one after that, still on page 10, was on November 12th, 2015. There's a, an appointment on 11-4 that was canceled that I didn't put an entry on. Okay. Well, thank you. No, that's helpful. Uh, what about uh, November 12th? Was yes. that a joint session? Yes, it was. And was that in person? Yes. Okay. And then the next session on page 11 is uh, that even I can understand. Uh, so there was a no show on December 4th, 2015. Is that right? Yes. I, I'd like to clarify the no shows. In the oh, city. please, please do. Um, I think they both told me, but I think Mr. Depp told me at one point, but I already knew because this happens with couples. When a couple is having a lot of trouble in sessions, but they're doing well at home and they're in a little bit of a honeymoon, you know, period, they cancel instead of coming in because they know coming in will get them into conflict. Okay. And and fair to say that that happened again on December uh, 10th, 2015? I can't tell which sessions they were sick or which, which, tesh, which sessions they were canceling because of this dynamic, but it was admitted and explained to me and I understood it fully. Okay. Um, and still on page 11, the next session was on December 15th, 2015, and it was a telephonic session, is that right? With, yes, with uh, Ms. Hurd. That was with Ms. Hurd, okay. You write, then last night, Monday, she slapped him as he sat there talking incoherently. Who slapped who? I actually, I actually know what happened. Oh, what happened? This was, as I said, Ms. Heard talking on the phone to me. Mr. Depp's mother was in ICU. We had been... He was being incoherent and in talking about another being with another woman. Did she... Did she tell you that he had hit her first or was she the one who initiated the slap? She initiated that one because I think she felt demeaned and threatened. And this is what she reported to you, correct? Yes. 
he was not present. He was not on the call when she made these allegations. Uh, was 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 he? No. And you didn't see any of this, did you? No. And you didn't see her in person? No. After. Okay. Um, then... Uh, A lot of very ugly is, and serious uh, allegations coming out in this case. We knew that they would. Really, underneath this defamation case is a very serious topic, that of domestic violence. We expect to hear a lot more from the couple's counselor, which you need to squeeze in a break. Thank you for being with us here on Court TV and Live. <laughs> I'm Tanley Painter in Fairfax, Virginia for the Johnny Depp defamation case. And this is Court TV, your front row seat to justice. Welcome back. Couples counselor Laurel Anderson is testifying in a videotaped deposition done earlier this year about what she learned about the ex pair's relationship when it came to allegations of abuse. Let's watch. Referring to there, what she reported to me. Um, which was an improvement that she didn't participate. So she is it fair to say that she told you she did not hit him at that time? Yes, that's what I believe my notes say. Yes. Then you write she threw can at him since home fighting. Then she better. Who is the she who threw a can at him? Miss Heard. And the him whom she threw a can at was Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. Did you receive that email on or about March 8th in the morning at 6.23 a.m.? Well, apparently because I responded in the morning. Okay, well then let's, we'll skip it. We'll go right back to your response. Um, so, the response at the top of the page of the second entry, I suppose, did you write that email to Mr. Carino on March 8th, 2016 at 7.27 a.m.? I did. Uh, and fair to say that you weren't enthusiastic about the idea of, of making a house call? I was not. And Mr. Nadel, have asked you about what it was you wanted Johnny to understand about the process. And I, I was wrong because I can see now the date of it, looking at it more carefully. This is after the relationship has devolved considerably. So what I, I think was guessing was earlier in the um, relationship. I don't know what it was I wanted him to understand. Let's go back to exhibit two then, please. And we're not gonna repeat, we're just picking up where we left off. And now we've gotten up to page 13 of the 17 page of your notes. So if we can start, oh, exactly. Um, do you see where the notes of your session on June 18th, 2016 begin? Yes. And was this a solo session, couples session between you and Mr. Depp only? This is with Mr. Depp, it's blue, it's just the two of us. Gotcha. And it lasted one and a third hours? Yeah. You write fight on her April 22nd birthday. He late, huge fight. His mother died on the 20th. I think I know what you're referring to, but if you could please describe that for the record. One second. This is when I got the Scaramanga Productions on my phone. So he found me at home, which was new. Um, domestic violence charges had already been made. His mother had just died on the 20th. Well, when he told you that there was a fight on April 22 birth, 22 birthday, was that Ms. Hurd's 30th birthday? I think it was. And is he telling you uh, that he arrived late for the birthday dinner party and there was a huge fight? Yes. 
Do you know who Tasha Von Ree is? Yeah, well, I know her name. I know she was someone that Ms. Hurd was in a relationship with. Then you write, was chaotic violence, but gave as good as she got. What does that mean? I believe I'm quoting, I'm, I think I'm quoting what, some of this is just my typing of the words he's using while he's talking. Very, ver He's also very verbal when no one's interrupting him. Um, and I think he talked about how chaotic it was, how violent it was, and she gave as good as she got. That's kind of a direct quote. Those are not my, that's not my language. Directing your attention further down the page to the entry for July 13th, 2016, three hours Amber in person. Was that an in-person meeting you had uh, a couples ther therapy with only Ms. Hurd? No, this is not couples therapy. This is Ms. Ms. Heard by herself. I wrote in person. Oh, okay. Um, so just to be clear, what follows in your, these are your notes for your individual treatment of Ms. Heard having nothing to do with couples therapy? Not true. In my mind, uh, the dust had not settled on the couple yet. And this was just kind of aftermath of the, the uh, kind of falling apart of the marriage. But okay. I, I didn't mean to mischaracterize anything. I was just trying to suss out what it was. No, this is not individual therapy for her. This is about the marriage. If we could please go to exhibit six, Lucian, which is a new document. When I say new, um, it was produced uh, by Dr. Anderson's office, but knew in the sense that Mr. Nadelhoff didn't ask her about it. Uh, Dr. Anderson, have you ever seen this document before? Of course, I created it. <laughs> okay, uh, and what is it? It's a treatment summary. When I was first uh, subpoenaed, or my notes were required years ago, my notes are jumbly. They don't say a lot. <laughs> they're they're confusing. They're, you know, as you've seen, or you haven't seen, actually. So um, I did what psychologists do. You take, you go through all of those notes and you, and your brain, because it's not as if you're not left with a very, you know, I hope, a very clear sense of what went on. So I took everything I thought and believed conceptually about them. I went through all of my notes and I wrote this treatment summary. And then if you could go up. Paragraph is still there. Yeah, and I wanna ask you about that one paragraph. I think you've described this in the course of your testimony, but I did want to ask you about your sentence. She reported oh, always hitting him back as a point of pride, but admitted that she eventually initiated the hitting herself. Is the she you're referring to, Ms. Hurd? It is. And is the him you're referring to, Johnny Depp? It is. Okay, let's move to the next page, please. And, and I just want to focus on the one a snippet on Bates, page three. As we had to break, here is the big takeaway. This couple's counselor is saying that Johnny Depp and Amber Heard engaged in mutual abuse. We're going to hear more from her on the other side. This is Court TV Live, your front row seat to justice free for 30 days
so glad to have you with us on this Thursday afternoon here at Court TV Live. Welcome back. I'm Julie Grant, your midday host. We are in Fairfax County, Virginia, watching the dueling defamation case of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. We want to go back into the courtroom now. We're hearing from the couple's counselor, the woman who did couples therapy for the two of them while they were in a relationship. Her name is Dr. Laurel Anderson. She's on the stand right now. What's being played is a videotaped deposition. So this is sworn testimony. It's like she's testifying in the courtroom. This all counts as evidence, but it was pre-taped. You'll see a date on the video at some points of February of this year. Let's watch. But I, I, I don't have a photo of it. I don't remember that well. Is that, Dr. Anderson, consistent with your understanding that there were no other entries on December 15 uh, or December 17th relating to physical abuse? You know, um, there was nothing about physical abuse, nothing in that next session. It was all about Christmas and get, and her therapist telling her one thing. Not um, and what was the size of the bruise on her face that you observed on December 17th? Maybe like this, in more than one place, quite an inch. You said it was in, so is it fair to say those are small bruises in more than one place? So there was, how many one inch size bruises were on her face that you observed? I'm not a good person to ask this question to. I don't really remember. I wasn't looking to memorize it. I think there's other data that will support this, not from me. A few minutes ago, you briefly spoke about seeing bruises about an, about an inch on, on Amber Heard's face. You recall that testimony? Yes. And you were, you were making motions with your fingers. But, but I was saying multiple. I'm not saying one. Right. You were seeing multiple, multiple bruises on Amber's face. Yes. Correct. When you um, were talking about how the size of it, you, your fingers were under your eyes. Did you, you remember seeing the bruises under Amber's eyes? That's what I recall. They may have been in other places throughout her body. I don't remember, but I, I do remember her face. You turn to page 13. Um, in the blue, where it says, was chaotic, violent. Do you know what Mr. Depp was referring to there? I, I, what I said, Previously, and I'll say it again, um, he's kind of doing a retrospective of trying to understand the relationship um, and is characterizing it as chaotic and violent, but she gave as good as she got, and he uh, and she she started it, but and you know he's he's complaining. But he's also just kind of describing what the relationship was. His um, mother is dead at this point. The relationship is not is not good. It's over pretty much, and he's trying to come to terms with it. And he still loves her, <laughs> and is mourning. So he's just he, he's a very articulate man. And when left alone to speak, he can describe intelligently what's going on. I think I'm kind of. I think while he's talking, and I'm not trying to be obtrusive with my taking notes, I'm listening, I'm talking, but I'm also copying down a word here and there. So my belief is that those are his words. And, and Mr. Depp, I think you testified about this, but I just want to make sure it's clear. Mr. Depp told you Amber gave as good as she got, correct? Correct. Did you ask what Mr. Depp meant by gave as good as she got? Um, I was pretty aware of what he meant. I agreed. What did he, what did you understand, Mr. Depp, to mean? All right, I have. Um, she initiated fights. She started violence. She uh, rose to the challenge. If he started first, which I, and so she, in my opinion, that had been established throughout the relationship that she fought as hard as he did, and he tried to de-escalate far more than I think. She did. Do you know, did Mr. Depp talk about his fingertip with you before June 18th, 2016? No, because I would have written it when he first mentioned it to me. Did you ever see Mr. Depp with an injury to his finger during any of your sessions with Mr. Depp? Or, during or, that, 
counseling or, you know, sessions together with Amber Heard. During that session, yes, he showed me. On June 18th, 2016, but before June 18th, 2016, did you ever see an injury to Mr. Depp's finger? No. But in, yes, no, I didn't. When we were uh, going through Amber's, uh, the incidents where Amber described Mr. Depp being violent, Mr. Depp was not present, correct? That's true. All right, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and take our lunch for the afternoon now. No outside research, not talk to anybody, and we'll give you till 2.15, okay? So you can be excused with Debbie Lusa now. Thank you. <laughs>